Hello, in this video we're going to explore the idea of one-to-one -one functions of sufficient statistics. And we're first going to look at two examples to kind of illustrate the idea that I want to prove. Um, so let's jump right in. So let's let x i be a chi-square random variable. i goes from 1 to n. So we have a sample of size n from a chi-square distribution. Now, Theta lives in the parameter space omega, which is part of the uh, positive real numbers. So the density of f of, um, of xi would, is this. This is the standard chi-square distribution. xi is positive. And the joint density is the product of these. So it would be f of x1 times f of x2 all the way up to f of xn. And then since these are constants out front, they just get multiplied in times. And then, of course, we I write it in the numerator, same way here. So this is uh, to the nth power, bring it in the n, but then I bring, take it to the numerator. That's why it's a negative. Here we have x1 times this, x2 times this, etc. And since they all have the same exponent, we can just take the product and raise it, and then here, um, so since the product of these, it really means you sum the exponents, we get this. And so for all xi greater than zero. Now, using the uh, Fisher name and factorization sort of notation that we used from the previous video, um, this here is a function of only the x's, and this here is a function of the thetas, and uh, this statistic, which we'll call t, okay? So where t is the product of these x's. So thus, by the Fisher name and factorization theorem, t is sufficient, is a sufficient statistic for theta, right? So that's it. <clears throat> now, example two is a follow-up from a video that I have called Exponential Family Chi-Square. And so where we write the chi-square distribution in what's called the exponential family, if it, if it can be written in this form. And that's what we, we're going to try to do, is take this joint density up here and write it in this form. Now here, the x, we'll just use for this x, which is what this piece is here. Okay, And here, to get it into you know, raised to the x, you know, to the e power, what we do is we take the log of this and then the e. So then those cancel and we get this back, but then we have it raised to the e power. And then if we take the log of a product, that's the same as the sum of the logs, okay? So the log of this is what this piece is here, right? So this exponent we bring out front, and then it's that log, and that's what this is. And then over here, the log of this, that we take the, the minus n out front log of this gamma, and that's what this is. Now the minus is, is factored way out front. And here, the log of this, this can be brought out front, that's the log of 2. And that minus is out back, that way it looks like this form. This little piece here is actually called the log partition and has some fascinating properties in regards to this uh, statistic here. Take, you know, whether it, uh, the first derivative is the mean, the second derivative is the variance, but we're not gonna cover that here, but I recommend you watching that video. So now, what the, ex the theory in the exponential family tells us that this right here is a sufficient statistic for theta. Okay, so that's it. This is a sufficient statistic. But, but my question is, though, this is a chi-square distribution. And if in this case we said the product of the xi's is a sufficient statistic for theta, and here we're saying the log of the product is a sufficient statistic for theta. Okay, now using the Fisher name and factorization, you know, this is h of x, so it's a, just a function of the x's. 
and then this is a function of theta and t and in this case we call it the log of the xi's and perhaps I should have called that t1 and uh, this t2 but I didn't um, so um, the log of the uh, product of the xi's is sufficient statistic for theta so but my question is can both the product the xi's and the log of the product be sufficient for theta and the answer is yes and that's what we're going to prove a couple of theorems in regards to this so let's let phi be a one-to-one -one function and if t is sufficient for theta then t star which is a function of that sufficient statistic t is also sufficient for theta and it's a quick little proof so note that t can be thought of this the inverse of the function of t you get t back but this piece here we were calling t star right so t is the inverse of you know of phi of t star okay so then this joint density because t is sufficient can be written like this according to the Fisher name and factorization theorem but t is really this piece right here and this can be actually thought of as a function of t star but let's call it k star so this you know the h comes down and then this piece here is this but we're going to think of it as a function of t star well which implies that t star is sufficient statistic for theta according to the Fisher name and factorization theorem and then that's what we wanted to prove now one other theorem um, we'll call it theorem 2 let's let phi be a one-to-one -one function now if t is sufficient for theta then t is also sufficient for theta star which is a one-to-one -one function of theta and the proof goes like this note that theta can, is this so it's the inverse phi of phi of theta and then you get theta back but this piece in here we were calling theta star right now let the joint density it's equal to this right right because this is just theta but this can be thought of as a function of theta star so let's call this f star and just think of it like this so it's f of given theta star now they're the same we're just kind of thinking about them differently but notice here that the joint density which we are calling this so we'll bring it down and since t is sufficient for theta it can be factored like this remember this is theta right that's theta but this is also a fun can be thought of if you rethink about it as a function of theta star so let's call it k star now the x comes across and then we'll just think of this as a function of theta star but notice that you know notationally we called it f star so f star is equal to this but which by the Fisher name and factorization theorem implies that t is sufficient for theta star the one-to-one -one function of theta all right well that's all i have for this video hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye